Before you get started building, make sure that you have a very flat surface. In this case, I've got a ceramic tile. So this thing's pretty good size. It may not be quite as big as I'd like it to be. And also make sure that you have some good light options because you're gonna wanna be able to see everything really well as, you, as you're connecting components. So I'm gonna go ahead and undo all this and then I'm gonna organize it. I'm also going, since there's kind of some little metal shavings and stuff, I'm gonna make sure I'm very careful and I clean this off a little bit before I get going. And that's very common with Ziltec extrusion. Um, if, if you get extrusion from other companies like LDO, you may not have that, but uh, you're also gonna pay a little bit more for it. Basically at this point, I'm just going to come in on each one and carefully remove the plastic. You might notice a little bit of schmutz on here. That's normal. You can wipe that off with like a paper towel and IPA, which is probably not a bad idea to use on this stuff. You want to make sure you get all those little metal flakes in there that are, you know, out of there. You can use a like a little spray air spray can to remove that stuff. And once you're done cleaning out all the little metal particles, um, what, I, what I like to do is just take some isopropyl alcohol and then uh, get a paper towel and just kind of wipe everything down real good. And that should get anything that's just kind of sitting there hanging around off. You probably want to do each side. Okay, the first step on the frame, you're going to need four of these, the longest extrusions, and then four of the Extrusions here, which don't have any holes. These ones do. Okay, and for the uh, West 3D kit, you're actually going to be using these M6 size screws because that's what the uh, extrusions are tapped for. It's a little bit different than the stock uh, Voron, which uses M5s. So just go ahead and pre-thread those. All right, I'm going to go ahead and do the first one here. So I've got my long extrusion with the blind holes. And what you're going to do is thread this in enough where you can um, just kind of put the extrusion over and we're going to butt that joint up and then we're going to go through the hole on the other side and then just snug it up. And now I'm using a, and this is why the, the flatness of the surface is really important. You want to kind of hold it nice and uh, square as much as you can and we're going to, we're going to square it up here in a minute. I'm going to go ahead and do thread the next one. And this is the A extrusion. Maybe this corner like such. I've got this corner here. I'm going to go ahead and take my driver. I'm going to move these other guys out of the way for a minute. I'm going to tighten it up through the blind hole. I just want to snug it nice and tight. All right. And it's up to you if you want to use Loctite. It certainly doesn't hurt. I usually like to use it. A Loctite like this blue Permatec is great and it really, um, it's nice because it's a gel. So you can just take your screw and you can just get a little bit on the end of it like that. And then that's, that's usually about enough to go in. So I'm going to go ahead and repeat the process for this. I'm just going to go in with my access hole, with my driver, and just kind of tighten that right up. Okay, that's nice and flat. There's not, no bounce in it. Looking good. Now if you have a square like this one, a machinist square, these are also really helpful in making sure your corners are nice and 90 degree angles. And you can just kind of hold it there while you're tightening things up, giving it nice and square. And I always like to tap the top of the extrusion to make sure that there's no bounce. You can also check it on the outside. That one looks pretty good. When you're squaring your extrusion up, you want to make sure that there's no gaps really anywhere and that everything is nice and flat, all three extrusions. If you have any kind of gap, then you're not where you need to be and you need to push things down and square them up. All right, now that I've got the first corner done, I'm going to go ahead and repeat for the next, uh, for this corner, this corner, and then this corner. So I'll go ahead and rotate my extrusion. I've already got a screw threaded here, and I'm going to need to take one of the longer extrusions again with the holes, and then I'm just going to fasten that blind joint and do the same thing here.
Okay, that one's in. We're gonna grab one of these. Okay, now we're gonna rotate. And just finish these uh, corners here. So same procedure. We'll grab our corner piece. I'm just gonna put it in. I'm not gonna completely snug it yet. Just tight enough so it doesn't wobble too bad. Lift it and then fasten it. And once again, I want to put pressure on these pieces. And just finger tight. Okay, and I'm down to the very last corner. It's pretty much the same process. We're just going to need to put both screws in. To the ends of the extrusions and these you're probably going to have to put in a little bit closer okay make sure you grab the right extrusion and you want the ones with the holes this should, this should be the last one like that then we're just going to drop this guy right in okay, i think that's pretty good now something you can check you don't want any bounce you can tap all four of the tops of these legs and if you have any kind of bounciness that means uh, you're not quite square so you need to drop probably either drop one of these pieces or the top piece if you have no bounce then you're good and now i'm going to turn the cube to do the top extrusions I'm just going to rotate it okay now i've got the cube rotated as you can see here and i'm just going to secure another um, extrusion here we should still have four of these left, and all four of these are going to be the be on the uh, top of it. We're going to secure them the same way. The only difference is we're going to slide them. We're going to put the screws in on the end and slide them in and then tighten them through the blind holes. So I've got the M6s at the ends here. You're going to need to push them in a little ways. Give you enough room. And then I'm going to go ahead and slide those in. And then I'll go ahead and tighten them up a little bit. And when you're tightening these, if you have a square, this is <clears throat> a good spot to use it. And you want to maintain your 90. And you can, you can come back and check it here. Yeah, that looks good. And we're going to do the same thing with this side. That one's good. Nice and square. There shouldn't be any play or wobble on these on these corners. And you can check them. Make sure that you're completely flat when you do check them. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and rotate again. We're going to put the screws into the ends. And we're going to have to slide them in from the, t the top of the, or the outside of the extrusion here and simply uh, snug them up on the outsides through the line joints. Once again, utilize a square if you have one. Do the same thing for the other side. Also, when you're doing this, make sure you're putting some pressure on, the, on these two extrusions to keep them held down. And then we're gonna rotate one more time. Okay, now I've got it in this orientation. And I'm just going to add an extrusion here, same process. Okay, that one feels good too. And we're top, tapping the top here, and there's no wobble, so that's what we want. And I'm just going to rotate it one more time this way. Okay, you should have one A extrusion left that you're going to use. We're going to slide them in. And 
right, looks good. Nice and square, that's what we want. And here's what I like to do to test it. Put it on a flat surface and then tap the corners. You should not get any wobble at all. If you hear any wobble or feel any wobble, that means that something's not quite square. And you can repeat that on the entire, you know, flip it over and try it on each corner if you really want to.